The following presentation is made possible by EA Sports Game Changers. What is going on guys? Bengal gonna hear me back at you with another video today on Madden NFL 19 for the first time. Huge shout out to EA for flying me down to their studios down in Orlando, Florida a couple weeks ago to record this content and for the rest of the content that I produced prior to the game's launch on the 2nd of August. But today we are rebuilding the Cleveland Browns. This rebuild will be unlike a lot that I do across the course of the year as I will be doing almost all of them in a live commentary style format. Um, in this case, of course, I recorded it a little while ago. So I have to go over. I have to post com. Hope you guys enjoy it regardless. Definitely subscribe for more Madden NFL 19 rebuilds and more Madden NFL 19 content across the year as we're looking to build around that quarterback. Baker Mayfield selected with the number one overall pick in the draft. Uh, and I pretty much have two style of rebuilds that I do on this channel. I do a fantasy style where pretty much anything goes. And then I do a realistic. And of course, I did not have access to any of the custom draft classes as the community has not been able to create the files yet as they have not had access to the game. So when those files get made for the 2019 NFL draft, believe me, guys, in the realistic rebuilds, we, uh, we will be using real draft prospects. But we're taking a look at this team and there are... A lot of key pieces put together. Of course, the rebuild for the Browns has almost been starting um, as soon as the new GM took over, which was, I believe, in uh, January. And a lot of changes have been made. He traded for Demarius Randall. He traded for Jarvis Landry for Tyrod Taylor. But of course, this is kind of a fantasy-style rebuild, so anything can happen. And we're pretty much just trading the pieces that I don't really want on the team in order to uh, to win in Madden, in franchise, if we take a look at more of these prospects, more of these players that are coming into the NFL, and that would be Denzel Ward's star development, which is part of the new development that they have in Madden 19. So we have, you know, where you'd have slow in the past is now normal, essentially, and then it goes up to quick, star, and of course, superstar. First trade is a big one. Trading a first-round pick, Michael Kendricks, essentially for Tyron Smith, and then we pick up Quan Alexander trading TJ Carey, Jamie Collins, and a fourth. Of course, Joe Thomas retires, looking to replace that left tackle spot. And we're trading away Tyrod Taylor back to the Bills. Bills fans across the country explode as they are furious that Tyrod Taylor is back. And of course, giving up a little bit of value in order to bring him. We wanted to start Baker Mayfield. Baker Mayfield, we need to win that offensive rookie of the year. You see the team starting. We got beasts like Larry Ogan, Joby. Miles Garrett, EJ Gaines, Denzel Ward, of course, Demarius Randall. That linebacker core is looking pretty good with Quan Alexander. But we're going to go ahead and simulate to that midseason mark and see how we're doing. I have high hopes for this team as we are 5-3. and three. Players are ready to negotiate contracts, though. And it starts with a pretty big one in Josh Gordon. He's had some off-the-field issues in the past. We're not going to dive in uh, too much of those, you know. Uh, you know, I don't want to sound all high and mighty like Josh Gordon might be, you know. He's back to the field. He's doing damage for us. I wanted to sign him to a new deal. Also, submitted an offer for Quan Alexander. He didn't really have any interest at the time, so we're going to go ahead and do that later in the offseason as EJ Gaines does agree to come back to the Cleveland Browns, as does Brianne Body Calhoun with a three-year deal. Not really paying him too much. Um, and, of course, you have the option to either auto-generate rookies or use the draft class. I think it makes the most sense for these fantasy style rebuilds over the course of three or four years to use the generated prospects. And then of course, for the realistic, it makes the most sense to actually use real players into uh, in the NCAA. But regardless, we are gonna simulate to the playoffs. Hope we make it. And here we are, 10 and six in the first year. Tyron Smith is a huge addition of the team. Quan Alexander, obviously in the middle to fit that uh, to fit that defensive scheme that we got going. Take a look at the stats. What a rookie season for Baker Mayfield. Nearly 4,600 yards, 26 touchdowns, only 13 interceptions. Carlos Hyde, over 1,000 yards, 13 touchdowns. They did fix the simulation stats so you don't have the backup running backs. Having a ton of rushing touchdowns, which is really awesome. So, receiving. David Njoku actually led our team in catches. Jarvis Landry was close. Josh Gordon was fairly close. Juice led our team in touchdowns with eight. Of course, Seth Devolve even got action in there. As far as sacks go, those are down. Tyron Smith led up six. The rest of the offensive line held together pretty well. And then Christian Kirksey led our team in tackles. Demarius Randall also had over 100 to match. Um, probably his career high, or, or actually probably over his career high, as Miles Garrett leads us in sacks with 12. Larry Ogunjobi with 10 tackles for loss. Interceptions. Two for Jabril Peppers and Denzel Ward led for our team. 
Of course, now Jabril Peppers hopefully not playing 40 yards off the line of scrimmage. He'll actually know how to play the safety position and start making some plays for us. The big issue with the Cleveland Browns, in my opinion, at this point, is not talent, but it comes down to coaching. And Hugh Jackson just, he's not a very talented coach, uh, as you've seen Sean McVay was so talented in his first year with the Rams. Tom Brady wins the MVP. Baker Mayfield actually in the running for it at number seven. Tom Brady, AFC Offensive Player of the Year. Baker Mayfield in there at number six. And then AFC Defensive Player of the Year. It's all Jags, Patriots, and Raiders. We have nobody in there pretty much, but Miles Jack would win it for the Jags. Telvin Smith as the runner-up. Defensive, excuse me, Offensive Rookie of the Year, Baker Mayfield. He would be the only Brown that got in there. Aiden Hirsch, you see Jalen Samuels even in there for the uh, Steelers competing for touches. As Rashawn Evans of the 6-10 and 10 Tennessee Titans wins Defensive Rookie of the Year. Denzel Ward in there at number 6 for your Cleveland Browns. And uh, as you can see, this is the team. I have um, auto-progress players on because I didn't have a ton of time to record. I just wanted to uh, you know, get in and out of these as quickly as possible. But Baker Mayfield is up to an 87 overall with that star development. Hopefully at some point... That'll even go up to superstar as we have an 89 overall offense, 83 overall defense. Our team is really in a really good spot. Um, but at middle linebacker, we're kind of in an awkward position without Quan Alexander re-signing. Absolutely want to get, uh, have him and bring him back to the team. Denzel Ward all the way up to an 85 overall. We kind of have to figure out what to do with guys like Jabril Peppers and Brian Body Calhoun and see where they fit into our team. Miles Garrett all the way up to a 95 overall. We face the 12-4 and Oakland Raiders in the wild card playoff to get to the divisional. Can we advance? And we do. The 12-3-1 Chargers. The LA Chargers will be our foe in the divisional at Charger Stadium in Los Angeles, which is what they're calling it in the game. And before we did that, I wanted to go ahead and use some of our coach XP. And we didn't have a ton of it, but I wanted to focus on the defensive backs because we have a really young core there, and we have a lot to build around. I wanted them to get the most XP that they could. We would simulate trying to get to the conference championship in just year number one, and it was not to be here as the Chargers would eliminate us. We did finish 10-6, and six, though. Kind of weird how the Steelers finished uh, at only even at 8-8. Eight and eight. You know, anything could happen in the NFL. I'm not saying that's uh, impossible. I just feel like the Steelers, at least right now on paper, are a much better team than the Bengals, who also finished 8-8. Eight and eight. And I think the Steelers, let's be honest, are probably a little bit better than the Browns. But we would try to move back in on Quan Alexander. Uh, and in order to do that, we would have to extend that salary and uh, really give him a little bit more money than I wanted to. But 2.6 per year really isn't terrible for you know him being our potential franchise middle linebacker so we would bring him back and then free agency wow talk about a stack class Le'Veon Bell Grady Jarrett even Ryan Chazier is here of course in the game he is eligible to play that it's almost being uh like he never had that injury and I think everyone wants Ryan Chazier to come back and be healthy and be happy but um in the game anything can happen he's healthy in the game we might even go after him but i'll tell you who we're absolutely going after and that is Le'Veon bell classic bell cow running back excuse the pun but we did want to bring him back tyrod the bills really didn't want him as they were they don't re-sign him tyrod taylor goes out in a free agency but we did end up bringing in superstar running back Le'Veon bell and ryan shazier to be that franchise middle linebacker and Le'Veon bell fits really really well into this team is duke johnson's more of a scat back not a primary. I think Nick Chubb is a great change of pace back um, as that, you know, potential third down guy and that third string running back. And then Carlos Hyde uh, will be on the last year of his deal coming up here anyway. But our team is really starting to come together. Le'Veon Bell will be a huge reason why in season number two as we'll advance to the draft and hopefully just continue the success that we've seen so far. Playoffs first year was a big, big spot for us as we picked 10th overall in each of these rounds here first second third as we look to target buck clark six foot six 235 he would end up being a 79 overall ranked number 25th in the class um or 25 in the class 25th overall i should say and there was a glitch that was going on that is fixed now in franchise where it showed that you had the number one overall pick for every pick as you would take a player it didn't really matter too much but then i'd later take sedgwick Nishvar uh, there out of oklahoma state he looked pretty good 75 overall 62 um in true talent in the draft class of course you see with the archetypes that he's not a 75 overall for every single position but he really does fit with that run stopper scheme as in the 
the second round, late in the second round, I believe, we would take RT Levins, a running back, and he would be the number one overall player in the draft. We would take him, of course, not at number one. That was late in the second. Um, 83 overall receiving back, 80 overall loses back. Even though I know we have a ton of running backs, we go out there, we sign Le'Veon Bell, Nick Chubb is okay, Duke Johnson's pretty good, and we basically got Duke Johnson at RT Levins. So why would you do that? Sometimes when you see the best player available, and did I know he was going to be the best player overall in the draft? Of course not. I thought he was going to be pretty good, though. I thought absolutely first-round talent, so we were getting a lot of bang for our buck there. I had to draft him, and that's exactly what I did, and then look to move Carlos Hyde. So I added Carlos Hyde in a first-round pick that I didn't think we'd be needing, and then a second-round pick, and that would end up getting us Reuben Foster of the San Francisco 49ers. That was a huge trade for us, and you got to be asking again, why would you go out there and trade for a middle linebacker? Well, we're trading some linebackers away right now. Quan Alexander, Christian Kirksey in a third round pick in 2020 gets us one of the best interior defensive linemen in the league and one of the youngest as well in DeForest Buckner, formerly out of Oregon. He's been an absolute beast with the Niners so far. So I really wanted to add him to that defensive line. And you see it's coming along nicely. Miles Garrett, Larry Ogunjobi. DeForest Buckner, Emmanuel Agba on the outside. We are looking super stout on that defensive line. The secondary is coming along nicely. The linebackers, we have Reuben Foster. We have Ryan Shazier. I think even Joe Schobert is starting at left outside linebacker, if not mistaken. And we would take that team and simulate to the midseason mark, hoping to continue strong. We have some free agents, though. DeForest Buckner, Demarius Randall. Obviously, I want to re-sign DeForest Buckner. We went out and traded for him. Of course, we had to bring him back. 91 overall, only 25 years old. Demarius Randall's another one. 27. In his fourth year now out of Arizona State, we would bring him back as he's more of a natural free safety with this Browns team. Joe Schobert, Pro Bowl linebacker last year in real life. Brought him back to play left outside linebacker. The team is coming along really nicely. Corey Coleman has less of a role with us, with us now that we have Jarvis Landry. Now that we have, uh, you know, Josh Gordon healthy. We re-signed him last year in the game. Of course, we drafted Buck Clark. But I think Corey Coleman's a really good four. Emmanuel Agba would come back as well. Didn't really have a ton of interest in J.C. Treader. 28 years old, 78 overall. Uh, he was asking for about four per year. And I thought if we could get that down a little bit, it would be a good move. But didn't really want to budge, so we didn't go after him. And we would simulate to the playoffs where we did end up getting the first round by 11-5 and five for the Cleveland Browns. As this team is coming along really, really nicely. As you can see, some of the points have not been used. So Baker Mayfield has four skill points remaining. Uh, so we're definitely going to upgrade him get him to a higher overall we really want this team to just come along and Baker Mayfield is at the heart of it all the Oklahoma quarterback that is just an absolute monster now in the NFL what is that 91 overall a little bit difficult for me to see but yeah I think that's 91 overall with four skill points that we can use to upgrade so kind of wanted to go in a little bit of a all these categories kind of make them a jack of all trades QB. So we upgraded Fuel General. And as you can see, if you guys don't know about the archetypes yet, you can see that each one in general boosts their overall up one. The scheme will always boost them by one overall. Uh pretty much pretty much always, as far as I've seen. But we wanted to build, you know, all these different categories. Fuel general even impacted throw power on that one. And then I decided let's give out. Uh, and try Scrambler, and that even includes throw power again. It's kind of a toss of the coin. It's a little bit random, but he's up to 98 throw power, 94 overall for Baker in his second season. That's exactly what we want. We want Baker Mayfield to lead this team. He's got an often, or excuse me, an awesome offensive line in front of him, and we really have no excuse not to succeed here. Um, you know, provided Madden Simulation wants to make this team successful. 4,100 yards for Baker. 33 touchdowns, only six interceptions, as you could arguably, I mean, you could make a case that he improved going into his second season. Le'Veon Bell, what a beast. 1,700 yards, 17 touchdowns, averaging 5.8 on the ground, broke 54 tackles. Josh Gordon led her team in catches, but it was the Le'Veon Bell show. Juice managed to haul in 11 touchdowns, almost 1,000 yards, averaging 12.9 yards per carry. Le'Veon Bell also a huge impact player in the passing game what do you have like 500 plus yards six touchdowns something like that just ridiculous numbers i think it actually was like 600 yards and five receiving touchdowns miles garrett leads our team in sacks with 13 and a half 10 and a half for emmanuel agba as denzel ward grabs five interceptions not a ton of interceptions for the team but here's a big reason why 
10 forced fumbles for Ruben Foster. Absolutely ridiculous. He recovers four as well. And it's just like numbers that you haven't seen before. So Ruben Foster absolutely going off. No defensive touchdowns, but we would check out the yearly awards. We were the first ranked offense, and that's the reason. Le'Veon Bell being a Cleveland Brown is that reason. Changing teams within the same division. Uh, Baker Mayfield up there as well. And then we'd see the AFC Offensive Player of the Year, Le'Veon and Baker back to back. And we'd see the Defensive Player of the Year is once again, Miles Jack. Ruben Foster in there at number four. No other Browns. Offensive Rookie of the Year goes to Floyd Pitts. And of course, no Browns. Defensive Rookie of the Year, Jamon Plummer. No Browns. A little bit tough, but uh, it's not all about the awards. It's about the team success as we face the Chargers in the divisional round of the playoffs in back-to-back -back years. We're going to simulate to see who can advance to the conference championship. And once again, it is the Los Angeles Chargers. They're killing us. But you can't be too mad. This is only the second year of the Browns rebuild. We've already been extremely successful, winning 10 games in, in our first season, 11 in the second. I mean, you would consider that it could probably only go down from here <laughs> based on our success. But the team continues to get better. Maybe we can even go up. I'm really excited for season number three, of course. I already know what happens, but you guys are going to find out. Because in free agency, there are some interesting players. Greg the Leg is the number one rank, but there's also Tyreek Hill, Derrick Henry, Michael Brockers, Vic Beasley could fit in and play defensive end over Emmanuel Agba. But, uh, you know, we would see. We looked around. Tyreek Hill, of course, the flash almost. Uh, but we do have our receivers pretty much, pretty much settled. But Tyreek Hill could be a gigantic impact player for us if we can sign him for the right amount of money. Um, but we would keep jumping back in here to free agency, trying to figure out exactly what we want. And the issue on the offensive line now, uh, was center. We didn't have a center. We traded JC Trutter away rather than lose him to, uh, to free agency. So currently Joel Batonio is our starting center. Not exactly, not exactly what you want when he's also the starting left guard. So I figured let's go out and trade for an absolute beast. And that is a ridiculous trade. Terrence Mitchell and a fourth round pick for Quentin Nelson. I mean, how could I not? He's one of the best offensive linemen that we've seen in the draft for some time. Had to get him on the team. He is going to be playing guard for us. We're going to slide Joel Batonio over to center. And we would not have a pick until the third round. We'd see what we could do with it. Trying to make the most of that selection. And there's not really a ton of value here. We don't have a lot of the board scouted. Wide receiver, we pretty much have enough of those. Defensive tackle. Our team is very, very solid. Look at wide receiver. Bernard Hall looked very, very good. It was hard not to go with him. Patrick Howell looked like he was solid as well. We would take him. He was only a 72 overall, number 148 in the class. We took him at 87. So not exactly a fantastic value pick there, but a decent player in his own right. He has good intangibles, so we'll see if we can do something with him. But down the board later, we got our fullback. You know, the CPU drafted pretty well because I would simulate at that point. But the offensive line does look very, very solid. Um, as Joel Batonio actually is going to start at left guard for the time being. Linebacking core is super, super solid. Ryan Shazier, Ruben Foster, Joe Schobert. As we're going to advance to the preseason here. And then eventually the midseason mark. As we try to make the playoffs for a third straight year. Sounds pretty odd, Browns fans. But I'm in favor of it. I like the Browns making the playoffs. And uh, we'll see if they can actually do that in real life. But in the game, of course, we're on the right track. We're going to use some of our coach XP to get even more XP for some of our top players. And even some of the ones that need an extra boost. So you look at linebackers. You look at maybe offensive line. You look at maybe defensive line. We just want to boost as many players as we can. Because that extra XP is huge for skill points. Miles Garrett was a big free agent. We did want to re-sign him. Quentin Nelson at right guard. I mean, we're fine there. And, of course, Kevin Zeitler would be moved over to left guard. Joe Batonio over to center. Baker Mayfield down to a 93 overall. I guess confidence was boosting him to a 94 because he absolutely did not regress. There's just no way. Um, and the team really coming together. Denzel Ward is up to a 94 overall. EJ Gaines is pretty solid. Brian Body Calhoun is not too bad either. Definitely wanted to bring back Miles Garrett here before we simulated to the playoffs. Uh, but we would end up doing that at a later date. Another first round buy for the Cleveland Browns as we are 15 and 1. This Cleveland Browns team is absolutely unstoppable. Provided we were stopped one time. But, you know, other than being unstoppable and being stopped once, we're unstoppable if you follow that. Baker Mayfield, another great season, over 4,000 yards, 37 touchdowns, only six interceptions. 
we got the uh probably younger brother at this point of ryan fitzpatrick because he's like what if he he's gotta be 60 at this point Le'Veon bell another six season almost 1600 yards 14 touchdowns nick chubb got into the end zone four times receiving jarvis landry 1200 yards seven touchdowns david njoku with eight touchdown grabs buck clark the six foot six huge target out of wisconsin 11 touchdowns for him as he's an absolute red zone threat offensive line held together fairly well you'd like to see uh, better stuff from your franchise left tackle and tyron smith and even austin corbett on that right side but overall not too bad as reuben foster leads your team in tackles only one with 100 on the team 116 tackles for loss would be 19 from miles garrett see 10 from deforest buckner nine from emmanuel agba 11 sacks for Agba led the team. 10 and a half for Miles Garrett as we only have two double-digit guys. Denzel Ward, four picks. Randall, Peppers, Calhoun, Body Calhoun, three picks. Force fumbles, Reuben Foster again going off with six. He recovered three. And we would actually have a defensive touchdown. Jabril Peppers finally making plays as we lead the offense, or she lead the NFL in offensive yards yet again. As the MVP is not Baker Mayfield of the 15-1 Browns, not Le'Veon Bell of the same team. It's Ezekiel Elliott of the 7-9 Dallas Cowboys. That is a tough pill to swallow for us as we really want those awards. Coach of the Year, we got that on lock. AFC Offensive Player of the Year, Le'Veon Bell, Baker Mayfield at number two. And uh, Deshaun Watson even sneaks in there. Ruben Foster is your Defensive Player of the Year. I believe he was the only Browns player they got in there. Manti Teo, what are you doing in there at number three? Mr. Fake Girlfriends himself. That's got to be a fake award if you're finishing at that spot. If you're Manti Teo, I don't really even believe that. Anthony Hitchens gets in there as well. Zach Cunningham, Miles Jack, CJ Mosley. Whoever this Hanson fellow is for the Colts finishes at number two. Had to have been a drafted player. Really not too sure if I'm being honest. Francis Hanson, yep, drafted player. And of course, what are you doing there, Manti? Manti Teo, the shock of the entire video. It isn't the Browns going 15-1. It's Manti Teo finishing in the top 10 for Defensive Player of the Year. Telvin Smith, Nick Kwiatkowski, and then there's Miles Garrett at number 10 as we finish with the bookends of the Defensive Player of the Year voting. We would be 15-1 in the divisional, though, and have to face the New England Patriots. Almost like the passing of the torch, if you will. You can see the team. It is just stacked at this point. Emmanuel Agba, we're going to upgrade a little bit, of course, going in right into Power Rusher, making him an 87 overall. That improves a ton of stats. Uh, the biggest one probably being power move there. And the team is just looking unbeatable. Do the Patriots have something to say about it? It's not a very Bill Belichick-like record at 9-7. and seven, But also, it's not a very Browns-like record at 15-1. and one, But we do end up beating them where we'd move on to play the Kansas City Chiefs in the conference championship. My coach is absolutely stunned. But we're going to simulate to the Super Bowl. One win and we're in. And we make it as the Browns will face the Los Angeles Rams, another 9-17 in the Super Bowl in Tampa. Scheduled for a 6-17 start. We will not be stopped. One team stands in our way, and that is the LA Rams. We have a little bit of an XP to spend. Ruben Foster has that skill point that we're going to want. We got a 99 offense. 99 defense everybody's playing up with confidence baker mayfield even up to superstar development not like it matters at this point but that accuracy is insanely high 99 medium 99 short only 84 deep is a little bit disappointing but we are ready shaking baker level 13 head coach at this point ready to go i love the new screens that they did by the way with the comparison they changed it a little bit but you could see each overall uh per scheme so you saw of course the matchups you got Le'Veon Bell versus Todd Gurley. Miles Garrett versus Aaron Donald. Baker versus Jared Goff, which is a little bit of an interesting one. Uh, <laughs> but, hey, man, anything can happen here as the Rams are in the Super Bowl. We are ready for it. The Cleveland Browns in the Super Bowl. Who would have ever thought? Me. Me, all right? I have faith in this Browns team. All it took was Baker. We are ready to simulate here. Super Bowl Sunday. Browns, Rams. As we're going to drive down the field, end up settling with a field goal and drive back down and actually score a touchdown this time. But the Rams answer with a touchdown of themselves. And then another one, 14-10 Rams, before they make it 17-10, tying it up with a field goal before the half. 
and it is 17-16 now after another Cleveland field goal. LA does the same, and then Cleveland answers, making it 22-20. The Rams stall out. Hecker punts. All we have to do is kill the clock. We can't manage it. The Rams have the ball back. 140 to play. And the Rams driving down the field before turning the ball over. No timeouts for either team. Second and 11. The Rams come out in victory formation with under a minute to play. All Baker has to do is knee out the clock and he should do exactly that. And there it is. One more knee and that will equate to a Cleveland Browns Super Bowl for the first time in NFL history. Emotions have never been higher. The moment has never been bigger. 20 seconds on the clock. We're going to knee the ball out one more time. We're going to take a delay of game. What was I doing? <laughs> so overcome with emotions, clearly, that I don't even remember to press the button to knee the clock out to win the Super Bowl. We take the delay of game, forcing a third and 17. Unfortunately, the clock stops at this point because we're stupid. I'm stupid. And I don't, I, I can't press X or A or I think it was on the Xbox at this point. I'm not even, I'm not even sure. Uh, but Baker will finally knee the ball down. And there it is. That's going to secure the Cleveland Browns winning the Super Bowl for the first time in NFL history in the third season. I mean, things worked out really well. We're going to come out in punt formation because that's, that's, that's how it works in the Super Bowl when you knee the clock out. But here we go, man. Let the confetti rain down. The Cleveland Browns are Super Bowl champions as we have defeated the Los Angeles Rams as Sean McVay can, hangs out with his uh, his boy toy there, Jared Goff. And uh, yeah, that, that, that orange confetti raining down. It's a beautiful sight as Sean McVay meets Shaken Baker out in the middle of the field. Jared Goff uh, crying himself to sleep. Doesn't know that you can take your helmet off when the game's over, but clearly nobody does. And, um, yeah, I mean, what can you say? I think this was a pretty pretty good success for the first rebuild of Madden NFL 19. Let me know what teams you guys want me to see next. Well, you want me to? Okay, well, I, I'll be, I've already will have seen them, but what teams do you want to see me do next? And, of course, we will be doing both realistic and fantasy style. Let me know down in the comments section below what your favorite style is, because I'll be curious. Maybe that means I'll do one, you know, I'll do more of one style over the other to start out. As we'll pro They'll probably eventually equal out over the course of the years. Ruben Foster, hoist that Lombardi trophy. Give it to Baker. There we go. Baker Mayfield, hoist the Lombardi trophy. Jarvis Landry's up there. Le'Veon Bell's up there. But the Cleveland Browns and Baker Mayfield are Super Bowl champions. Will you ever hear that in real life? Let me know down in the comments section below. But that's pretty much going to do it for this video, guys. Thank you so much for watching. I appreciate you guys. Baker Mayfield had to have been player of the game. But I will see you in the next one. Again, thank you so much for watching. And uh, yeah, see ya. Take it easy.